I'm Peter Block in Chicago at ACC 2016 for On the Scene, and with me to the left, or my left, I should say, is John Carroll, an old friend. John has been looking at an interesting issue. John, we were early on in TAVR, and there was a lot of discussion about who should or should not do TAVR, whether or not volumes would have any effect on outcomes. John has looked at the TBT registry and other data. So John, tell me what you did, and then we'll talk about what you found and what the implications are. Yes, Peter, I think that you've scoped the background well, that this is all about looking at another potential determinant of outcomes, and that is the site volume. And uh, we certainly, as a background, know the more we do something, typically we get better. But actually doing volume outcome analysis in other areas has often not shown dramatic results. And uh, this was a unique opportunity uh, for several reasons. The way TAVR was rolled out in the United States was very controlled, thoughtful, and uh, resources were devoted to optimizing it. And so uh, part of that, uh, uh, out, out the way it was uh, uh, rolled out, was the development of a registry to look at real world outcomes. And so the TVT registry being a collaborative venture between Society of Thoracic Surgery and ACC has done that. CMS's national coverage decision mandated that for all. And so we came up with, after four years, a little over 43,000 patients who we analyzed specifically looking at the issue, is, is there a volume outcome relationship in TAVR? I can't stand it, John. Tell me, is there? There is. Okay. And awesome. It has some interesting features. First of all, we, we looked at mortality, stroke, leading complications, vascular complications. All of those things have to be risk adjusted because, as you know, Peter, there are patient characteristics that determine outcomes, uh, methodology, techniques. So we all we had to do uh, risk adjusted algorithms for each of those outcomes. Secondly, we had to stratify volume in a way that's uh, valid in this field of looking at volume outcomes. And so this case sequence approach was used where every institution, their first case goes into that bin. Their 20th case goes into that bin. And for some centers, they never get very high. So as you get in higher, higher volumes, you've got smaller number of hospitals. But we started with 395 hospitals who were contributing to this. So we saw a volume outcome relationship for risk-adjusted mortality, risk-adjusted vascular complications, and risk-adjusted bleeding complications not stroke, and the uh, and it was not only statistically significant, the relationship between volume and outcomes, but it was clinically meaningful. We're talking about, you know, dropping risk-adjusted mortality by one, one and a half, two percent as one's volume increases. So that is a very strong message uh, for all the stakeholders in TAVR. So, uh, John, this is, a, this is an important study. This is a big deal, and I think it raises the question of what we do going forward with TAVR, perhaps who should or should not do it. I'm not gonna make any judgment about that. I don't think you will either, but uh, give me the short version going forward. What does this mean? Short version. These are data that are uh, very valuable for the different stakeholders to think carefully about. Certainly, we want patient access, but we also want to optimize outcomes. And how the medical system in the United States is organized to optimize outcomes, these data provide a blueprint or real data on doing that. There you have it. Thanks, John.